Hello and welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen Saving Your Disaster Campaign. This is the collaboration between Saiken and Tapcat and we are in episode number 5. Tapcat has just finished the last mission and he told me that he had a couple of surprises such as the upgrades of the weapons. Good job man. Uh, and he reserved an extra doozy for me recover an item from an advent facility and you can really see that uh, he's a true friend because he gave me something act to actually work with in this case uh, number one there is the always beloved uh, side trip surgical which reduces our squad size to three definitely upon my alley i love that but uh, the recovery itself uh, will include a specialist so that uh, in itself is great the drone is super good for remote hacking whenever you go into such a mission uh, where you have limited turns available uh, keep in mind that not needing to run to the actual objective is a huge boon in your favor so this is actually a fantastic team uh, giving the tracer rounds also to our uh, to our grenadier as always, I uh, play with whatever uh, has been given to us, um, so uh, this is actually a really decent uh, looking start for the three of them, which means we are going to go in. Magnetic weapons upgraded, let's get this party started. And we're going right into the mission, here we go. Good, we're landing. Let's give that a go. Oh, nice. We're on the graveyard, one of my absolute favorite types of maps because it is a reminiscence on XCOM 1 where you were fighting on the graveyard. Nine turns, which is not a lot because if we look, uh, that's one full move, two full moves, three full moves uh, to even get there. Medium difficulty mission means around 10 to 12 enemies that we're going to face. So uh, this will actually be relatively ambitious to go through it. But ambitious is what we like. So heading to that location. Steel is going to scout. We do have the teamwork as a fallback. I want to take the high ground and essentially fight from there. So we're pushing in as far as we can. And Jester good to go. moves up as well. So far so good. Turn number one, not very exciting, but we are seeing on the first enemies. Vipers are bad news, really bad news. Moving to position. So we carefully move up. Very good. Don't want to stand too close to one another because the Viper typically can use uh, their poison spit, and that will be a problem. But I tend, uh, or I intend, to eliminate uh, them right away, which should mean we're not going to have a large problem. Um, we'll do a classical overwatch a trap, over, uh, um, one overwatch plus 100% shot, 50% crit chance, maybe we're even lucky, yep, Viper immediately goes down. And since we were in concealment, this overwatch shot did not uh, have any penalties. Sector's not really good at shooting. We don't know though if there is someone inside, so gotta be careful. This here would be a bit of a stretch. We haven't heard any movement downstairs, so I will be cocky and will take this movement here. Half cover, not great, but I want to aggressively go in. That won't be a kill, uh, so we will need to try to hit him, and the gamble paid off. 
very solid first round. Now we can slow a bit down, which is much needed because you can already see we're triggering additional advent. Okay, we're going to do the classical trick here. This is potentially the most difficult pack to deal with. And what we are going to do is solid cover for both. Standing far enough away so that uh, the purifier doesn't use uh, their purification grenade. Hit on the mech uh, that shreds. We have three options here. Common protocol would be an auto kill and we're going to use uh, that. Eight protocol to make Nitro has two, four, six, seven hit points. And we're looking at two, four, six, seven. Both of them could equally use uh, the eight protocol. Let's give it to Nitro. And then we're combat protocoling. Good, our chances here are mediocre. We could hand over teamwork and actually get a few better chances. But we don't have a disadvantage from range yet, so the heavy gun would have the exact same hit chances, but he does have um, tracer rounds. So we're 100% sure whether or not we should give it a go. I think we'll just keep uh, the teamwork for now. Take the 50-50. Didn't work out, but it's okay. Yeah, half cover isn't really protecting that much. Good, now's the time to pay back, and I know exactly how we want to do that. Finding a turret, okay. No, we're not hunkering down. It's payback time. There you go, shotgun to the face. Two, four, six, yep, that is a kill. I just realized we have combat protocol instead of healing protocol. Finally. So we're moving up. Always continue to move whenever uh, whenever you need to in order to reduce the problems here. We're now using the teamwork that we saved. And we're hunkering down. Very good. And finally, Combat Protocol. Easy peasy. Oh, look at that. Uh, it typically should ignore armor and go straight through. Well, luckily we hunkered down. Five more turns. I am greedy and I want the loot. I've got the loot here. Let's do this. We're going to move up. 
Always reload when you do have the time. In this case, I, I'm, my typical rule of thumb is if you're down to like one piece of ammunition, it's a good time to reload. Yeah, I didn't get it. Cool. What's our chance for Haywire Protocol? Sometimes you just want to stun these uh, things. 100% shutdown, that's what we're taking. So we're just making sure it can't fire back. Or in other words, we're stalling the situation. Another reload. And next turn we're going to advance. Moving up would be so much easier with actual healing protocol. Pushing up. This solves our problem with the turret. Good, and now a classical mistake could be or just running up, trying to get as far as possible, but at the end you should just play it safe. There's still a third pack and we don't want to trigger it. Three turns. Plenty of time for us to get there. If we were in time trouble, I would just explode this uh, with our grenade and use uh, the remote hack to get there. Moving up with full cover. Curious to see where the last pack um, is located. Steel moves up. The door is open, although it doesn't say that officially. On my way. We're continuing to move into full cover so that I can see everything inside. Here I come. Strangely enough, I can't hack from here, which I technically should be able to. Okay, last pack is around the corner. Menace one five, you're almost out of time. The detonator. Yeah, it's not as bad as it looks. We've got eyes on the objective. System infiltration in progress. Once we have done the system infiltration, though, the other pack will rush into us. Ooh, enemy protocol. We're going to prioritize that. And unfortunately fail. 20% extra hacking would have been awesome. Good, we're moving slightly over there. We know they are behind uh, there. Overwatch, overwatch, and wait for them to open the door. Well, hello there. Unfortunately, our well-timed and meticulously planned ambush overwatch actually did not work out that well. Mm. Everything missed. Well, let's start with the obvious uh, stuff. Moving into full cover. There's a good chance that this here is a 100% kill. Fortunately, it is not. This here is a deceivingly good spot but it would be full cover against uh, the sector, unfortunately. Finally. However, we will get quite a bit of proximity bonus. Also can't fully move over there. 
What we could do though is we could remove this and kill him 100%. Reload to make that work. The other option is we're hitting both of these clowns and we're just going to take a mind spin outside. So matter of the fact is we will only be able to kill one. Maybe two. And heavily injured uh, opponents hit just as hard as other opponents. So whilst the other play would remove cover, we still have a flanking uh, situation. This here could be a kill. It's not, but everybody from our side is in full cover and they can't reach us, which means they will bring their A game and use mind spins in one shot. Kill. Kill. Kill them all. Over here. Of course. Reload. That's a hundred percent kill. <clears throat> Plus cover removal. We're getting mind control back. Make sure that a protocol goes on to our injured uh, soldier again. Healing protocol would have saved us a lot of problems. Nice little crit into another crit no normal hit but uh, that's a kill we had an advanced stock so we would have killed him anyways yeah we took some beating which was to be expected without a mimic beacon or anything else if the engagements do not go absolutely according to plan you will get a retaliation and the problem in this case is we don't have armor upgrades, so retaliations could mean in some of the instances that we're losing a soldier. But yeah, that's also not the end of the world, it's part of XCOM. We're taking run and gun. Phantom and Shadow Strides, it's not a good ability really. It's 47 days gravely wounded, okay. Well, we're not going to see him anytime soon but we got an autoloader and expanded magazine and the laser sight which is way more than we could have asked for rapid response uh, would have been uh, um, would have been uh, reinforcements on each of uh, the missions we got an engineer on top of that which is great really good news so using that to continue clearing faster and what else has Tapcat uh, done? Yeah, we didn't want to get that yet. Hunter's Axe is being produced. It seems that he ran into a new mission relatively so soon. Not much has happened. Increased regions income is one of the things that I like to do because it will give you income every single month and it typically increases it by like 30 to 50 depending on how successful you are so this is uh, something that is underestimated i personally like them a lot we now got a hunter's uh, the hunter's axe we've got the schematics and our equipment is ready to begin assembly. Skulljack would be good, Bolt Caster, not so much. Frost Bomb is not bad. We do have two cores, so I would say we're continuing with experimental ammunition. We already got a spark, uh, which is good. I would also say, given that we don't have any urgent projects, that guy no longer works there. And instead, we are continuing to 
clear out more alien debris. Very good. Alien signal jamming. Wonderful. Greatly increasing scanning times for six months. Uh, for six weeks. Six months would be a bit hardcore. Can only further our advances, we got a free so autopsy for mind shields, which is great. It's a good item. I know Tapcat doesn't like it as much as I do, but uh, it is actually a really good item. We need more alien alloys. We've got three to a little. Uh, mutant autopsy would give us plasma grenades. That's not a bad idea. Viper autopsy would give us more healing. Turret breakdown would give us a defense matrix. Mech breakdown would give us blue screen rounds. These uh, yep, there we go. Certainly blue screen rounds incoming. By our troops in the field. They face a well-armed, well-trained enemy. Nick Beacon not ready yet. Mind shield. What can I do for you, Commander? I'll build one just uh, to make sure that Tapcat is using it next turn. And we could spend uh, the rest into an iconic axe. You know what? I'll spend it because when we have zero or near zero alloys, the chance of them spawning is actually higher than when you have a moderate amount, funnily enough. The game realizes that you need the resource and will uh, spawn it more often. They've already got multiple facilities operating across the globe. We're running out of time. Into. Oh yeah, I'd, we're we're just continuing what we're currently doing. Oh, look at that! Stop an advent retaliation mission. Well, Tapcat will have fun with that. I absolutely love Advent Retaliation missions. Now, let's see if we can find something that makes it interesting for him. So, what type of team do we want to give him uh, in order to make that interesting? So, for starters, I think it goes uh, without saying that uh, we will run a bit of a robotic thing. Oh yeah, why not? Uh, one is take that and the other one is called uh, character info, uh, first name take and last name two. So we got take that and we got take two. Uh, let's customize this. I want the color to be a bit more uh, darkish. Yeah, something along those lines. Looks a bit like the uh, T-1000 of Terminator. Ooh, a couple of cool uh, skins. That looks good. So we got two mechs available, which per definition already is a good start. Now, what else do we want to take onto this mission? We're... Uh, Taking a sharpshooter. Is Chester the guy who does not have medical protocol? We keep promoting him and he continues to not be able to heal. Is there someone with medical protocol? Crypto. Are you the, uh, the real deal? Common protocol. Not the... Uh. Ranks. Medical protocol. See, there you go. You just need to have the right, um, the right people. So this time it is Jarenks, uh, albeit we want a bit more color coding to make that the official color coding of XCOM 2, and maybe a little bit less shirtlessness would be great. Oh boy, you could go in all shirtless. Okay, well, 
good enough. So we got an actual healer with us for the first time. That's not bad. It's a start. Now we want a grenadier. Titan looks like a good plan. And someone who can take the front line. A ranger. Snake. Good. Make armor available, yes. Make weapons available, yes. Make utility items available, yes. So we're starting. Good old med kit here. Improvised rifle. And that looks much better. Cool. Next up. The sniper. I'm tempted to give them tracer rounds, but they already have PCS perception. We'll give them the Enhanced Shadow Keeper, which in itself is good because that gives them a lot of aim. They're actually doing very well for themselves. And I would give them a Flashbang Grenade uh, to be able to move and then also throw the Flashbang. Now, Snake gets the Mind Shield. I know he will love that. I'm not even sure if he... Uh, realize uh, that I've given that um, over we got the special weapons here and Titan will be taking tracer rounds upgraded magnetic weapon she's doing good unfortunately only one frag grenade but that's okay for now we don't have a PCS we also got two robots with rocket launchers so that in itself should be fun. Let's edit them real quickly and see. Here we got a scope. Well, we have a couple of good weapons. Can't yet take anything else. Weapon upgrade here. I think if we go with an advanced hair trigger, that's not a bad idea. There we go, that's the machine look. I like it. I like it. So. I would think, although it being a difficult mission, uh, with that team, you could uh, ace it and give it a go to Sparks. Granted, yes, they are rookies, um, but they are Sparks, so gotta level them early to get uh, most out of them. And we just have a power spike with all of uh, the DLC weapons, as uh, well as some of uh, the Hunter... Uh, First DLC weapons, uh, the Axe for instance, or the Enhanced Shadow Keeper, both of them are great. No, that looks good. Uh, I think we are done here for today. Thanks for watching as always. If you uh, want to support the Resistance, then uh, think about clicking the like button, because that sends new recruits uh, into our way and will continue the channels. Thank you and have a good one. Bye bye.